Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunland Board of Selectmen. I'd like to call to order at uh, 637 the Dave Pierce um, here. Precision instrumentation of time is now longer working, so we go by a good old Verizon here. So the first thing uh, we'd like to do tonight is let everybody know that we haven't used a gavel in a long time. Didn't so, bring it. Uh, and we didn't bring it tonight. Oh, we do have it. Okay. So the gavel's put away. We're not going to break out the gavel um, because we're going to talk about uh, North Main Street reconstruction project. We have uh, Lou from Howard Stein Hudson Engineers. What, what he's going to do, so we'll go over the, uh, the quick um, agenda, is Lou's going to stand up, sit down, I don't care, and he's going to go through, he has four options that they have. They're due to peer review, and that's one of the things that we had discussed at our last, at our last get together about not doing anything until we had the peer review gone through so that we could look at options and look at different options that we may have thought about, we may not have thought about, but uh, Mass DOT actually worked with us to arrange for uh, uh, the peer review. Um, so unless anybody has any questions, um, what I'd like to do is let Lou get through his presentation. Once the presentation's done, take notes and we can do questions after that. Yeah, he does all the questions. Yes, your just, question? Just, just if I could, Mr. Chair, the second piece of homework we had was to ask for a series of exemptions, and those are part of this review. Correct. Thank you. Okay, so if anybody has any questions, if you can hold until Lou gets done, and we'll get to every question that comes up tonight. Okay? The good news is that they started on the boat ramp. Yay. So the boat ramp is uh, under construction, and hopefully within a very short period of time, we'll have pavement down there. Uh, they're doing the riprap on the on the the riprap is being put in for the uh, uh, drainage. Um, I think they got the proper grade, so I'm hope maybe they be actually doing the work this weekend or this week. So we'll see. So Lou, if you could take it away. I will. Thank you. I want to thank the board, Town Administrator uh, Sherry Patch, for the invitation to come uh, present to you uh, our findings of the peer review for the Route 47 North Main Street. Yeah. That's all right, we can go with another one. Uh, for the Route 47 North Main Street Reconstruction Project, uh, we were brought on by MassDOT to do an independent peer review. Um, so I'm going to get into a little bit about some of the project specifics. We're going to go through each of the options many of you have seen in the review and the peer review. Um, we're going to focus on some of the benefits and challenges of each option and then get into um, maybe a little more specific detail as to how each of these elements contributes or takes away from traffic calming. So one of the things we want to focus on is how do we keep speeds down and provide the best and most comfortable cross-section that fits in the context of the town and the needs of the people of the town. Lou, one second. Uh, before we go any further, I know we got the air conditioners running, but can everybody hear okay? No problems? All right. Um, actually, they don't, well, don't, don't broadcast in here. Yeah. Oh, it's only for it's the just, It's just for the listening audience. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Lou. Thank you. So a little bit about the project. Uh, this is uh, now a Mass DOT project, uh, project file number 607205. The work re involves resurfacing and related work on a section of North Main Street, Route 47, from Route 116 to Claybrook, Claybrook Drive. 25% uh, plans were submitted by CHA in June of 2017. Uh, HSH performed an initial peer review on May 21st, 2018. I think many of you may have seen that initial peer review. Uh, since then, uh, we were uh, told that DOT had considered an additional option. Uh, we then uh, included that in a revised peer review dated June 5th, uh, 2018. So taking a look at the current design, the 25% plans as presented call for 11 foot travel lanes, uh, two foot shoulders on each side, an eight-foot side path on the west side and a five-foot sidewalk on the east side. Some of the concerns we've heard um, from the public, uh, some emails that um, an opportunity to look at and review um, focused around the impact or visual impact of an eight-foot wide side path when compared to the five-foot wide sidewalk. Um, and the, from that came a request to look at, uh, to, to compare it to a bike lane option or an option that did not have bike lanes. 
So here's a rendering of the, the plans as presented for the 25%. Uh, you see an eight foot wide uh, shared, shared use side path. Um, again, this, this section, um, I, I understand that some of the path meanders and in some areas it's actually further away from the roadway. So it really is just more to focus on the cross section and the width of the elements of the roadway, that being the shoulder width, the travel lanes, and the side path option. So the eight foot side path proposed versus 10 foot shared use path. Um, the, the eight foot side path was proposed as a way to minimize impacts and uh, reduce the need for a 10 foot wide shared use path, uh, in part, again, to reduce impacts and also because of the low anticipated volumes of bicycles and pedestrians <coughs> along the corridor. Um, narrow two foot shoulders uh, under the 11 foot traveling two foot cross section would help reduce or assist in traffic calming, help reduce operating speeds. Um, and I'll get into that a little bit later. I have some numbers to share with you what happens when we look at travel lanes and shoulder widths and reducing each and the type of impact they have on operating speeds. Um, also, the sidewalk on the east side was, is to be rebuilt. Um, there are several large mature, mature trees along the corridor. Uh, we had an opportunity to walk the corridor to, and take a look at some of those trees. So special care should be taken. We're working within the root zone of these trees. Uh, some of the trees is highlighted in the plans. Um, there are calls for tree protection. So I think the designer is doing uh, a good job at least protecting the trees that are within um, immediate impact of the reconstruction of the side path under this option. One of the things we would recommend is to consult with uh, Massachusetts Certified Arborist, or if the town has a tree warden, um, get them involved in the process as well. Um, then you, there's a new sidewalk that's proposed north of North Silver Lane. Uh, currently, there is no sidewalk on the east side. Uh, that would be a five-foot sidewalk with a five-foot grass buffer. Um, in this area, the grass buffer helps provide additional separation from vehicular traffic. Um, although the posted speed limits in, in that area are just leaving the 35 mile per hour posted speed and a little bit beyond that, I think they pick up to 40 or 45 miles an hour. 45 miles an hour, the, that's beyond the project limits. Um, so that additional buffer creates some, more, some additional comfort for pedestrians who are walking along the sidewalk. Uh, the, another area of uh, consideration is the utility pole placement. Um, there are several utility poles that are kind of placed in that area between the buffer and the sidewalk, so that'll be something that'll have to be managed during the design to make sure that the utility poles don't impact accessibility along the sidewalks. So looking at some of the benefits and challenges for this first option, uh, the 25% design path, um, the benefits are the side path covers bicycle and pedestrian accommodations in the same space. So MassDOT has a requirement, Healthy Transportation Policy Directive, that requires that all projects accommodate bicycles and pedestrians to the best extent possible. Um, in this case, because you have a side path, that side path really serves both options. It has, provides a facility for both pedestrians and cyclists to share that same space. Uh, an additional benefit of this option is it's minimal ro uh, roadway widening. The lanes at the, for this option are 11 foot, the shoulders are two feet, so that's 13 feet times two or 26 feet curb to curb. Um, we know that a narrow roadway cross section can act as a traffic calming measure. And again, I'll get into some of those numbers as we get towards the last option, kind of give you a comparison of benefits with speed, uh, with shoulder width and lane width as it relates to speed. Um, the proposed design fits without requiring the addition of vertical curb. Um, one of the things, uh, with the exception of the area where there's parking, so as you come closer to the intersection of 116, there's some curb there because there's parking. Uh, but for the most part, the drainage will remain country drainage, which essentially is water that just flows off the roadway into the grass area. Um, there's no need for curbing, no need for um, additional drainage structures. Um, one of the benefits of the side path option, or really any option, is as long as you provide adequate buffer space between the pedestrian and or cyclist and the roadway, um, you don't need that curb. You, you, you can get by without that curb. Some of the challenges um, that we would see is that the, the addition of the side path reduces existing green space along the roadway. So what was once a five foot sidewalk would now need to increase to eight feet, adding an additional three feet. And we'll get into a little bit of the comparison. So what's three feet here, uh, looking at a cross section that later on looks at adding um, the on-road bicycle accommodations and what that does to the overall cross sectional width. Uh, there's also potential for more tree impacts uh, than what's shown on the plans. I think one of the things I mentioned earlier is the impact associated 
uh, with paving and understanding um, how that impacts trees. The, the, generally, the canopy of the tree, often depending on the tree type, often is about the, the root system is similar to the canopy of the tree. So you want to be careful when you're paving and you're excavating that you know you're um, aware of that. Um, we move on to option two. Um, this was another option. I believe this was actually proposed before the side path option, which was 11 foot travel lanes, five foot bike lanes, and the two uh, five foot sidewalks. Uh, under this option, uh, bicyclists are on the roadway sharing, uh, well, they have their own dedicated space along the travel way um, adjacent to vehicles. Uh, one of the things we know about uh, vehicular use and, and comfort is that as speeds and volumes start to increase, uh, bicyclists start to feel less and less comfortable in the traditional five-foot bike lane. So um, when you look at the, the percentage of the population that feels comfortable and under most conditions cycling, um, as speeds and volumes increase, they start to feel less and less comfortable. So option two, the bike lane option, uh, this would call for standard 11-foot travel lanes with five-foot bike lanes. Uh, this widens the roadway three feet on each side, increasing the curb to curb width to 32 feet. Now, when we compare that back to option one, we were at 11 and 2, 26 feet, plus the three feet additional widening for the side path, you're at 29 feet. So, this cross section requires an additional three feet beyond option one. Um, the wider roadway may lead to higher operating speeds. So, again, I'll, I'll, touch, that on, I'll touch on that shortly. Um, when you have a combination of uh, wider travel lanes, wider shoulders, you start to see um, an impact on speeds and operating speeds. Uh, there's also a visual impact of, of a wider roadway. Um, what I mean by that is if you have a travel lane, if you have a wide roadway that has a bike lane, um, viewing that um, as you're traveling along the roadway, it has a more open, expansive view uh, to someone driving in a vehicle than narrower um, travel lanes, narrower shoulders. That additional width, if, if we're to go somewhere, would go to the side path. Um, some of the things that you'd still need um, required to update uh, would be the sidewalk on the west side. Again, potential tree impacts. And going back to um, heading north of uh, North Silver Lane, uh, sidewalks would need to be shifted to avoid the need for curbs. So we talked about that additional five foot buffer for the sidewalks. Uh, there may be a need for uh, payment uh, for permanent easements. Uh, this would be just for grading. Uh, this is essentially, um, as the sidewalk gets constructed, the sidewalk itself will be sitting on town property. Mm -hmm. However, some of the grading work that needs to um, build the sidewalk or put in uh, loam and seed and get some grass growing back at the back of the sidewalk may happen on um, private property and that will need to be looked at or considered during the design. Uh, utility poles. Um, Again, we talked about the utility poles being lo located uh, further away from the road and then also not being in conflict where the sidewalk is placed. So some of the benefits uh, under this option, um, uh, they are dedicated on-street bike lanes, so that's, uh, it's, it's a better option than no, no bike lanes at all. Um, there is, it reduces the visual impact to the green space caused by the side path, um, although one would argue that seeing a three-foot increase 20 feet off the road versus six additional feet on the roadway might be less significant or less intrusive visually. Um, some of the challenges are that does require the roadway cross-section to widen by three feet on each side. It still requires a proposed sidewalk on the west side. Um, and I put in there, unless the design exception was granted, I think the plan is to provide sidewalks on both sides all the way through the entire project. Um, the visual impact, talked about the impact of a 30-foot versus 26-foot road. Um, that should be 26 feet, I apologize. Um, versus when you compare that to the eight foot path versus the five foot sidewalk. A uh, widened roadway may require shifting the utility poles and the proposed sidewalk north of North Silver Lane. So what, what you start to see as you move north of Silver Lane, uh, the options, w whether you do side path options, since the side path would be on the west side, the same impacts apply all the way through each option north of Silver Lane, uh, Silver Lake, Silver Lane, sorry, um, for the sidewalk on the east side. There are additional costs associated for full depth pavement. Those are not um, relative to the overall project costs. Those are minimal um, for the additional widening of the, of the uh, roadway. 
So one of the options, uh, this is one of the options that we were asked to look at, um, and this was incorporated in the second peer, the revised peer review, which was uh, a narrower travel lane option with the five foot bike lane. Um, you can see here that um, when you start to look at the roadway cross section, you're at 30 feet now versus the 32, so it starts to narrow a little bit. Um, some of the um, some of the options here are some of the considerations. Um, the narrow tempo travel lanes for five foot bike lanes, it will require a design exception, and I'll get into what that means and what that process involves. Um, the roadway does widen by an additional two feet on each side. The narrow, narrower travel lanes do help provide some traffic calming, and uh, there's a less of a uh, lesser visual impact from the widened roadway when you're comparing uh, 10 and fives versus 11 and fives. Um, does still require the updated sidewalk on the west side and similar um, the North Silver Lake uh, sidewalk as you continue to the project limits. So what are some of the benefits? Um, again, you're providing dedicated on-street bike lanes. Uh, you're reducing the visual impact to the green space caused by the side path. So now that additional widening on the roadway is um, from uh, 11 and 2, uh, it goes to 10 and 5, so we're adding an additional um, 4 feet, where we're adding an additional 3 feet to the side path, so it's getting a little more, uh, the additional pavement is starting to kind of match up more. Um, narrow travel lanes do act as a traffic calming measure. Uh, some of the challenges, uh, we're still widening the roadway by 2 feet on each side. Uh, there's still a requirement for a proposed sidewalk on the west side. And um, so now as we move through, um, option four is essentially the, really the no build uh, option or the, um, this removes the eight foot side path. Uh, you, you provide, you're providing the two sidewalks um, all the way through the project limits. Your travel lanes are reduced uh, from 11 foot travel lanes to two foot shoulders. Um, the narrower roadway does help reduce, uh, help reduce speeds through traffic calming. Um, you start to see a kind of a better combination, maybe when you consider a 10 foot travel lane and a three foot shoulder. Uh, this does provide the least amount of physical and visual impact. It still requires uh, an updated sidewalk on the west side, and this will uh, require a design exception from MassDOT for, providing, uh, for not providing bicycle accommodations on, on the roadway. Um, in conversations with MassDOT, understanding the design exception process, uh, we know that there would be uh, unlikely that they would grant a design <coughs> exception for a combination that has a reduced traveling width and inadequate shoulder width. Um, and this is what that section um, would look like. So again, no, no bicycle accommodations, uh, minimal roadway widening, uh, no side path reduces impacts, both physical and visual. Uh, there's a decrease in costs um, for a, a small decrease in costs associated with reducing or removing the eight-foot side path, uh, putting it back as a five-foot sidewalk. Um, some of the challenges are that it does not provide bicycle accommodations. Uh, bicycles are required, essentially going to be required to share the roadway or try to travel through the narrow shoulder, along the narrow shoulder. Um, still does require sidewalks on both sides of the roadway. And a design exception will be required from MassDOT. So when comparing the two cross sections here, um, here we're looking at uh, the side path option on the top and the option three below that has the narrow travel lanes with the bike on, on road bike lanes. Uh, you start to see some of the differences in cross sections. So for example, the on road uh, travel lane bike lane option takes curb to curb is 30 feet. When you look at the option one curb to curb, you're 26 feet. That difference is four feet. When you compare the shared use path option to the sidewalk option uh, below in option three, that difference is three feet. So under option one, your, your pavement width inclusive of your uh, shared use path or sidewalk is one foot less. So talked a little bit about, um, talked about the, the impact of speeds on shoulder width and travel lane widths. Um, I have with me and I can share this, pass this around. This is from the Federal Highway Administration. Uh, they did a study looking at the uh, impact of speed on lane widths and shoulder widths and the combination of the two. So I'll just walk you through an example. Does um, it look at the impacts of lowered speed limits? 
Um, what do you mean lower? If you were to reduce the speed limit? Um, this looks at just purely from an infrastructure. So if you were to reduce the travel lane, not if you were to, to change the, the posted speed limit. Um, okay. So for example, a travel lane width of um, 12 feet and well, let's look at, uh, let's compare these two examples. Um, so under option one, 11 foot travel lane, two foot shoulder, we're looking at a, a reduction in free flow speed of three miles an hour. So that's the top option. The option below that, where you have 10 foot travel lanes and five foot bike lanes, we're looking at um, a reduction speed of about 2.4 miles per hour. So they're very close, about a 0.6 mile per hour difference. Um, the, the, I'll, I'll just, I'll, a couple more slides and I'll, or a little bit more and I'll be done, open up for questions. Um, so I do have, um, I do have this uh, information here if you're, anybody's interested in looking at it. Um, you can look at the different combinations, different options, and how that impacts speed based on travel lane width and um, shoulder width. Talked a little bit about the design exception process. Uh, Federal Highway and Mass DOT recognizes uh, 13 controlling criteria from ASHTA policy that if any of these criteria are not met, a design exception is required. Um, Designers and engineers are faced with many complex trade-offs when designing highways and streets. A good design balances cost, safety, mobility, uh, social and environmental impacts, um, and these need to uh, and the needs of a wide variety of roadway users, uh, bicycles, pedestrians, and vehicles. Uh, good design is also context sensitive. Um, it results in streets and highways that are in harmony with the natural and social environments um, in which they pass. Um, in May of um, in May of 2016, Federal Highway uh, changed their criteria. They actually reduced it from 13 to 10. Um, however, that the uh, elements that we would be looking for a design exception um, did not change. It's still for lane width and also for, uh, depending on which option moves forward, it could be uh, under bicycle, the requirements under the Healthy Transportation Policy Directive, which are uh, related to uh, bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure. So as I mentioned, 2014, uh, Mass DOT issued Engineering Directive E1406, and this was really uh, Mass DOT's, uh, as part of the Healthy Transportation Policy Directive, uh, to really try to improve accommodations, uh, look beyond just vehicular accommodations and provide accommodations for pedestrians and cyclists. Uh, this directive outlines minimum bicycle and pedestrian accommodations that must be bet, uh, met depending on the roadway type and type of project you have. For the North Main Street project, bicycle and pedestrian accommodations will be required on both sides of the roadway in the form of sidewalks uh, on each side um, and uh, a five foot bike lane or protected bicycle facilities, whether it's a side path or shade use path on, e on each side as well. And again, as I mentioned there earlier, the side path option really covers uh, both, both of those. So it covers an eight foot wide side path, covers the sidewalk requirement as well as the bicycle Uh, if a design exception is being requested, a formal design exception report uh, needs to be submitted. So uh, CHA moves forward with a design. If one of the elements is not met, they'll have to file uh, a design exception report with the 25% design. Uh, each month, MassDOT does meet to review and discuss these design exceptions. And the committee will either approve, deny, or may submit comments uh, that the applicant can, ad can address or then resubmit for further review. And that'll be done through your designer, uh, CH, CHA. So some of the anticipated design uh, exceptions under option three, which is the latest option, um, Mass DOT has verbally okayed this design exception, uh, which is the narrow travel lanes with the five foot bike lanes. And then option four is the option where you have 11 foot travel lanes and two foot uh, shoulders that would require an exception for bicycle accommodations because there are no accommodations being provided as part of the Healthy Transportation Policy Directive. Uh, design exception for horizontal offset appears to be needed for all options and this is due to the uh, proximity of the utility poles to, to the roadway. Um, this is typically something that's included in the design exception generally waived by MassDOT. Um, not a major issue but worth mentioning. Some considerations. Um, option three looks uh, uh, results in 
essentially the best compromise between what the towns, what we feel the town's looking for and what Mass DOT would allow. Um, new sidewalk on the west side does not need to uh, be located next to the roadway. There's an opportunity to, um, to minimize impact of trees, to have the sidewalk perhaps meander. Um, and uh, the goal would be to, um, again, the goal would be to place a sidewalk and some of these, uh, whether it's a side path or sidewalk option, uh, an area where you have the least amount of tree impacts. So at this point, that ends the presentation. Um, if you want to go back to. I had a question. Is there a significant difference between what the design will be from 116 to the North Silver Bank and then North Silver Bank? Is there a change that happens after North Silver Bank? Does the side path continue uh, all the way to Claybrook Road? Because I have to let you know that I'm in a historic home, and there isn't enough room for this thing. It will be at my front door. Yeah, um, so the, the, the one thing I do know, I'm different probably the plans, so I can take a look at that. Um, I'm, let me just take a quick look where the, I think it ends right at Claybrook. I don't think it extends. Well, then there's, there's a significant problem. It will go through my front door. Someone does not measure. Yeah, it looks like it ends and comes back down um, just sh just uh, south of Claybrook. Um, on the east side of the on the, side. On the on east, east side. On the east oh, it's side. on the east side. I thought the side. No, I'm sorry. The, it, it ends, sorry, saying my north and east. And, um, the, east side, the east side is the side that Claybrook is on. Yes. So it. Yes. Correct? Correct. correct. Right. So it ends south of the east side of Claybrook. So the side path is designed for the east side or the west side of North Main Street? It is on the side. Or west, no, it's on west, the west side. side. It's the west side. Actually, again, again yes. this would be if it's eight feet wide, mm -hmm. and how far away is it designed to be away from the road? Uh, as it starts to approach uh, Claybrook, it's about five feet, based on the plans that we reviewed. So you're looking at, so essentially the sidewalk now, mm -hmm. There's no side by, there is no sidewalk on the, on the west side, or there's nothing no, on the east side. No, it ends at Jim Williams' house. Yeah, it's, 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 all, it's all at, North, at North Main, at North, 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 North Main Street, Street yeah. North Shore Lane intersect. Mm -hmm. There's no sidewalks past there. At that point nothing right now. There's no buffer zone. There's no. <laughs> okay. Nothing on the east side. Right. Then it continues up. One on the west side. So I think, um, yeah. So I think I think if there's any has impacts to historical properties, or um, I think they'll probably look to cut that back if it is a side path option, um, and have it come back on road ahead of that, or see if you can reduce the buffer between the roadway and the side path option, um, or is, look at look at about this, I mean, um, someone could just start digging and cutting down my trees. I have about 40 trees that are right where this thing is going to go. Well, um, I don't they're think mature. Would... They're not recently planted. Yeah, so I think that the, this process is going to help identify or raise some of these points that um, th that we weren't aware of initially, and, and we'll take that information um, and present it back to the town, and the town will relay that information back to so, the designer. So Lou, are you have are you planning on is there a plan for sidewalks on both sides of the street all the way from the center of town all the way up to Claybrook? Yes, yes. The, the plans that were presented by CHI show yep. all of the illustrations illustrate the part of North Main before North, North Silver Lane right. 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 where there's right. a big wonderful trough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we understand that the cross section narrows once you pass Silver Lane, um, so that would be an area where. But you haven't surveyed where properties are and where. There, there's been a full survey done. Okay. Um, we. But you're not seeing that on what you have. Not not based on the plans we've seen or reviewed here. Um, the the the, the lay, everything that's been shown here is within the public layout. Way. That's important to bear in mind. Everything that you're seeing on drawings is inside the public way. It's inside the public right. way. We're not taking anybody's property with this project. No, I I. 
Well, some of them are. If it's inside, permanent if, easements. If, well, that would be for grading and seeding. I think is what he said. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. While they're doing the work. Right. While we're doing the work. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Um, if there are any impacts that aren't foreseen or aren't considered here, then we would certainly right. raise that as a question to, to pass on to the designer and have them investigate if there's any. Um, any, any impacts or, or any right away that may not have been clearly shown on the plan. So, and we're noting that in, as part of the of this process. Is there a target date for this excavation? I'm sorry. Is there a target date for the project? Yeah. Uh, so the project's still in the early design sure. phases, from what we understand. Uh, and checking in with DOT, it has a federal uh, fiscal year of 2020. Um, so it's still a few years out um, before it goes out to construction. And again, could it be as soon as next year? I'm sorry? Could it be as soon as next year? Or it's, there's no chance it would be? No, it won't be next year. Um, I, that would be something yeah. that the town would have to discuss with DOT. I don't know. That one would be project readiness. Two would be okay. the making sure that the right of way was secure if there were any right of way. Um, and then how quickly the design could be ready. Um, but I can't. process along. And, right. Yeah. yeah, so it's June and we're still talking about well, it. won't happen sooner, that's for sure. Can we go back to the slide with the uh, cross-section, the last one that you shared? Yeah. So, I mean, I think two fundamental issues that we've been talking about for the last several meetings. One is um, maintaining the historic character of the street. So I'm <laughs> curious why, I, I mean, I think the eight-foot shared use path has really been rejected by this, the group of citizens that have been meeting the last few times. And I would, it's my understanding, maybe in the last meeting, that if we, that the directive was to proceed with the two five foot, four and a half or five foot sidewalks in their current location. And your drawing on the bottom shows that sidewalk much closer to the road than where it is. And it also I, shows the tree line. And that's just for illustration purposes. It was, it's not with the sidewalk. It was really just to be able to compare everything within a, a tight image. That threw a lot of people for a loop. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so you're saying that the green spaces are, the, are supposed to be the same? The, the, the Ish. one on the, on the east Ish. side, we were able to keep it where it was. When we looked at the left side, the, the, the path and the sidewalk, um, depending on where you are, if you go north of uh, Silver Lane, it's going to be closer to the roadway if you're right. uh, east well, of it. Well, there's, the there's not road. really a width Because change. the cross-sectional width changes, right. so the right-of-way changes. So, here's the so question, it's just really just to be able to compare things side to side, not is to... Is the sidewalk for at least 90% of it going to stay approximately where it is on the west side? Before, is it going before to... North Silver Lane, at least, where the old it, sidewalks it are. It depends on, on the option. So if, the, if it's just the sidewalk that stays, <laughs> then yes, it would stay. It could potentially stay okay, where it is. So if we're talking about sidewalk, the tree impacts with the reconstruction of the sidewalk. If you were to do a side path option, there may be a need to meander the path to avoid some additional tree impacts. So it's not a, it's, you know. The, I, I think there's been a, a pretty strong rejection of either moving the sidewalk or meandering it more than perhaps to just avoid a couple of trees. And I would, I mean, if you're going to do that, why not show an existing condition drawing so that it's really clear to everyone that the sidewalk is staying, yeah. either moving or staying? Because the eight-youth shared path eight foot of their path was in a totally different location than the current sidewalk. And your drawing on the bottom seems to indicate that a five foot but sidewalk would appear where the eight foot shared use, use path was proposed. Which is Yeah, it would be nice to be able yeah. to react to something that's true. Yeah, yeah I just I, I think the we tried to capture the north of Sort of lane or, or one location. The, the way the placement of the sidewalk changes through all the projects. So I think it was really the idea was just to show the the differences between facility types, not necessarily its location uh, in, the, in the park. Well, that, that feels like a miscommunication because there was the tenor of the room is that's the location of the sidewalk is extremely important and also um, ultimately. A, sidewalk and only widen or reconstruct in areas where trees are not a concern. 
a design exception may be required for not reconstructing the entire sidewalk. But that would appear to be the closest to exactly what we have now in terms of the sidewalk. On page 8, uh, under option 3, uh, fourth bullet point from the top, last option within that section. Uh, fourth bullet down, and then there's sort of three slashes, yeah. and the, the final slash is the... So which one are you talking, which slash are you talking about? The last one. Last Another one. option would be to maintain the existing sidewalk, and this is on the west side, mm -hmm. and only widen or reconstruct in areas where trees are not a concern. And that's, I think that's what uh, we were hoping for. Yeah, and this is the this is one of the options that was proposed by the district office that we included in the review. So we were asked to first just take a step back. Um, th these weren't our options; they're options that um, have been presented throughout the project. So um, early on in concept plan, there was a narrow travel lane. Uh, I'm sorry, there was a 11 foot travel lane with a two foot offset or two foot shoulder. Um, then we looked at the side path option came into play. Uh, then there were discussions um, based on community feedback that said, well, why, why do we need to change anything? Let's just leave it at what it is. And I think that's the 11 and 2 option. And most, most recently was this compromise that came from the district office, which said, Mass UT district office, which said that we're willing to look at or consider narrow travel lanes, uh, provided we can um, put in uh, bike facilities in the form of bike lanes and reconstruct the sidewalks wh where they are. Um, the, the concern or issue I brought with reconstructing the sidewalks, even in some of the places where they are, there's going to be some issues associated to some issues or some concerns with trees or the impact of the trees, and that'll have to be managed. So that may mean that um, there'll be some coordination with the tree warden or an arborist, um, which may require additional trees to be removed, or another option, which we thought um, might be viable, is to take the sidewalk and see if you can move it uh, gently to avoid some of those trees. Okay, we have we have three we have <laughs> sorry. <laughs> right now I'll run the meeting. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Mr. We have three questions. The first is back there, then Peter, then Scott, then we'll then we'll so no one has to raise a hand. We've got three people. One, two, three, then we'll get we'll pick up more. Okay? Thank you. My name is Margaret Brennan. I live at one twenty six North Main Street. I apologize for the disruption my children may cause, but I'm, I'm here because I am interested in ensuring that um, cars slow down on North and South Main Street. My concern is that with the widening of a road, you invite visually, you visually invite people to go faster. And so I'm wondering if in your analysis you've looked at if, if we do that narrower travel lane, a 10 foot versus an 11 foot travel lane, how does that impact speed? Because I, because people won't use the bike lanes if people are driving too fast if they don't feel safe and i would like to be able to use them with my family and i i would be one of those people who couldn't do that if if cars are still even going the 35 miles now that's posted so i guess it's a twofold question of would the 10 versus 11 foot make a big difference if that's the travel lane and and has a has a discussion of a lower speed limit happened in in this meeting that I've missed, and if it hasn't, I think it should absolutely be part of this project because cars zip by, and it's scary. So um, the, the discussion is that the speed limit has not been part of the review process. Um, we did not consider it. Um, I, I think it's something that would happen outside of this project. I think you'd have to do a speed study on North Main Street. And I, I think I that's been done associated with a few other projects. Um, I don't know what. I think we were told because of the volume of traffic and right. the size of the roadway that the chance of lowering it below 35 is slim. Right, and then that's the other risk too, that if you do a speed study in the 85th percentile speed, so the speed at which 85% of the vehicles are reported, which is 45, are, are, are going faster than the posted speed limit, right. and you only have a five mile plus or minus per hour to post below that. So if, if it was found the vehicles were going 45, it essentially would be posting it at 40 an increase of the five, five, over five miles an hour what you have now. So it's, it's, it's going to be a risky 
thing to, to pursue. Would it be possible to I, include I, other traffic calming measures I, along I, with it? Like, yeah, that's a so I think, I think that's, that gets into a, a, a stronger possibility, which is that you, um, you take a roadway that you know may or may not have speeding issues. You perform traffic calming measures, so you implement traffic calming measures. Um, you hope that they reduce speed. And I'll get back to you uh, to your question about speed and lane width in a second. Um, by implementing some of these changes, then you reduce the speed, and then you can go back, and it might be a good time to then assess or do a speed study to see if these changes have now um, are, are in your favor or help reduce operating speeds. To your question about uh, travel lane widths, there is a study I have that um, here. This was done by Federal Highway Administration. that looked at a combination of travel lane and shoulder width and the changes in... Um, the, the changes in uh, free flow speed based on how, how if travel lane widths increase, if shoulder widths increase or decrease. So for example, um, the case where we have the 10 and 5, so 10 foot travel lane, uh, so this is the bottom option, 10 foot travel lane, 5 foot shoulder, the combination of those two uh, resulted in a reduction in free flow speed of about 2.4 miles per hour in the study. Reduction of 24 miles per 2. hour? 2.4 miles. So from and, and just so you know that the let's do it just so, just so you know that the baseline at which this was measured from was a twelve foot travel lane so that was your zero was a twelve foot travel lane and a six foot or greater shoulder so as you start to reduce the shoulder width and the travel lane width you start to see more and more reductions in operating speeds. Did I hear you say that a speed study is the only way to change a posted speed limit? Um, that's, that's the only way I'm aware of that. All right, Peter? Did I understand you correctly to say that with option three, the 10 foot travel lane width would require a design exception, but the state has indicated they would be willing to approve that? That's correct. And uh, when we were um, in, in performing our initial peer review, that was not an option we were made aware of. Until after we complete our peer review, with us we revised the peer review to not include that option. Because last time there was talk about uh, perhaps trying to get a, a design exception for an 11 foot wide travel lane and a 4 foot wide bike lane, and we were sort of told, no, that's not possible. Well, this is exactly the same with the road, and it's even more favorable to the bikes. Uh, I mean, to me, it's like, and it leaves the sidewalks essentially where they are uh, as best as they can do while, you know, not killing too many trees when they have to try and make the sidewalk better. It seems to me that's a, option three is a real nice option. I, I, I think option three was a little closer to what we had left last meeting. I think option three was the closest that we came. And I, I, I think, and this is just my reading of it, the real concerns are where the uh, sidewalks are, are going to be are, are going to be placed. Um, so I, I don't want to I don't want to stop the discussion on the roads and the whist, But from our last meeting, I think three was the closest to there. But I think we have at some point we need to talk about uh, the impact to our our tree belt because that's that's so important to our town. Right, but if <clears throat> it seems to me that this actually there's one less hurdle. If the state is willing to go with a ten and five option right. three, whereas we were sort of told they weren't willing to go with an eleven and four, which is sort of the same thing, and well, so I'm we're actually we're actually two feet narrower. Well, we're two feet narrower than the eleven and five, but we were four. we were sort of wanting to get an eleven and yeah. four, yeah. and we sort of got it here. We just got the white line in a slightly different place. Right. Yeah. Right. And and hopefully the can we travel lane. <laughs> and so I think so I think that's a I think that's something that. You know, I, for one, would be delighted with it. I think, you know, I mean, we have various views here, and I'm not sure what the overall view is, but, um, you know, we're not going back to the shared path because that got virtually no support. Um, but I think that's just that one thing there is would be, like, you know, that signs to me of, of a good deal. But the sidewalks are a whole it's other head, matter. It's a head, head in the right... Uh, head in the right direction. And the sidewalks are sort of... If we go with this option three as far as the road and the bike path, the sidewalks then become sort of a different matter because they've got to be worked out on their own because certainly south of North
Silver Lane, they're totally separate from the road. I mean, they're way apart. Yeah. They really are separate there. And then when you're going north of North Silver Lane, the whole uh, corridor shrinks. Yeah. And so you're going to have, you know, that's going to take careful doing of the sidewalks on both sides just to make it work at all. Right. Um, can, can, I, can I ask? Do they tell us not, if you've ever been a, on a jury, they tell you never to take a, a vote of the jury pool before you heard all the evidence. But, <laughs> so we can, but, is there anyone, do, do, is Peter's view shared by most in the room about option three being a better option for, for the road and the sidewalks? You mean the sidewalks are in their current location? Well, right there. That, that's <laughs> I, I, but, it's the road part. But that's part. Of, that's part, Lauren. That's part of the discussion. Okay. But I'm talking with about the road width and the bike width. Is I'm only about. talking about the the road width and the bike width. Is is that? Can I? I just want to raise something. I I, was, I would gladly change places with you right now. I'll tell you this <laughs> <one>. <laughs> but anyway, go ahead. What's your question? I know that the majority in the room is south of North Silver Lane, correct? Uh, no. no, that's questionable. No? no well, there aren't that many of us between North Silver Lane and Claybrook. Who's north of North Silver yeah, Lane? Yeah, raise your hands. Let's see. Which, which way is north? I'm You're south, south of it, Val. I'm south. I'm just south. To <laughs> Where do I live again? I forget. You're one of those south side. Yeah, there's, there's quite a few people on North North Silver on North okay, uh, North, Main. North Main Street. Okay. Yeah. I, the thing I want to say is that it sounds like south of North Silver Lane has been very focused on their sidewalks and not changing where their sidewalks are. North of North Silver Lane, there is very little buffer. There is no existing sidewalk. And there are existing historic structures like this paddock fencing that we've improved, planted all these trees, utility poles just a couple feet away from our fence, there's no way a sidewalk is going to fit with a two-foot shoulder. And the, so, the, so our fence is going to move, our trees are going to be killed, and then the, the utility poles are going to come in our, in our yard as well. You have the blue house? Yeah. Okay. Now we know where you are. Yeah. So I know the, the utility poles can't put their poles on your property. First and foremost, they'll, they'll always stay inside the public way. Okay. So first and foremost. Okay. And all of this discussion is about inside of the town bounds. Can, Not, nothing to do with. Can you tell us? Sorry. But the sidewalks continue past North Silver Lane. And they continue inside the public way. Can you define what the, inside the public way? That is? drawing. That drawing can, but it's really bad for my eyes. Okay. <laughs> okay. And that drawing. That drawing is public record. You can have it. It's a online. Right. That's okay. Okay. And it's, it's on the website. And it's on the website. Okay. okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Peter, you had your hand up first, and we'll go over here. Go ahead, Peter. I was just wondering if there hasn't been any discussion as to whether uh, there would be a reason or possibility of north of Silver Lane just having a sidewalk on one side of the road. It's, I'm sure that would, you know, two sides is required, but is that the kind of thing that there would be interest in, number one? And number two, if there was interest, would that be the kind of thing you can get a design capture? And, and, and that, that's, I would hope that the conversation would get to that point when we start talking about sidewalks, Peter, but mm -hmm. yeah, that, that's, but that's why it's important that your points are, are, are brought up now, because those are an exceptions that we can ask for. So, and, and it may, because of the way it works, it may be better just to have the sidewalks on one way than the, on one side versus the other, but that's something that we can ask for, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, the, and one is, side is way better than what we got now, which is nothing. Yeah, so one of the things that DOT looks at or considers is a logical turn eye. So where's a good place to end the sidewalk? Right. So if yeah. on the east side, as you're heading north, sure you if it just ends and there's nowhere to go, there's really no yeah, point in extending. Maybe no point in extending the sidewalk. 
to the very limits of the project, it might make more sense to provide a crossing at Claiborne or um, to, to get the, to get people. Right. I'm sorry, she, south of Claiborne at, at north. Um, it's, it's very little room. Silver Lake. Silver Lake. Yeah. On, that, on that east side. On the east side, on the east side. There's very little room yeah. for that whole stretch along the fence. And DOT, the DOT does grant um, DOT does grant design exceptions for partial, um, you know, for, for gaps in sidewalk provided they make sense. Okay. Question? Wait, Tom, did you want to get a sense of the room? In a second. I, I just want to... Yes, uh, I heard that, that you don't do anything about speed limits, but if we're doing a, a project that's really enabling bicycles and pedestrians and we don't have street crossings, <laughs> when we have a school there that people are going to want to cross through, we've got um, on this side, on the north side where you're working right now, um, I believe there's at least a project for senior housing. They're going to want to cross. We're making a nice pathway for them. And they would like to talk, cross. People who come down North Silver Lane might like to cross and go over to the top. And crossing certainly slows the traffic. They sure And if they're very visible and you can put a stop on them, in order to get across with your wheelchair or your child or several of them and the dog, it would be, um, that seems to me, is that part of your project? Or, or yes. does that have to be something yeah. separate? Yeah, at least two in there. That, that's actually, that's been our, one, um, <clears throat> just because just the center of town here by the library right. to, to cross, exactly. or the, uh, a lot of pavement. the Graves Library, to get across a road right there, mm -hmm. it seems like you're cross. At times, you're crossing um, a six-lane highway, yeah. Yeah. and there's a cross that we we had planned on on the plan to have a crosswalk there. And those and and one of the things that we had talked about was that by adding more crosswalks, that in itself may help because you see the crosswalks that may help with yeah. So a absolutely. So there would be crosswalks up by. Claybrook Road. Um, there'd be crosswalks down by where where North Silver comes into um, North Main Street. North Main, you know how um, North Silver Lane comes in, and that little that triangle that triangle goes away, and it's just and you just have one going going in the center there. So we we all think <clears throat> when we that those are things that would happen. We think no matter what, that would be favorable. Favorable changes well, to. That sounds very good. And, and I think that would uh, help very I, much with the, the speeding issue, which is really horrendous. Well, what what we have to do is that I I, I don't know the, the the our legislative body and our governor have set up a a process now where towns and thickly settled areas can reduce the speed limit to 25 on town roads. I don't know if that applies to 47. I, I don't know. If it would, because it may have some state jurisdiction on that. Lou, do you, would you know about that? Um, I can look into it. I don't um, to get some specifics. How far apart they have to be? Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, I think and, the and, issue is that it's already posted. So. Yeah, right and that's that's one of the things that one of, we we have changed the speed limit on North Plain Road by citizen you know citizen petition asks us that if we if we change the speed limit and we lowered that to twenty five. I don't know if we can do it on North and South Main Street. Uh, yeah, we could but find we're going to find, we're gonna find out. Um, There's a process. It's just not necessarily the town meeting process. And, and yeah, it, right. We, we go. We, to, we, we go to the statute process. of town. We meeting. go. We go to town. We send it to town meeting. The yeah. town meeting votes. Um, but to do it now, to to if if we per, if we were to petition the state to do it, the first thing that that happens, the state does a the state does a study, a speed study. And right now, I believe our 85 percentile is 45 miles an hour, and they would. And typically, what happens, they'd come back and tell us we need to increase the speed limit, not decrease the speed limit. Yeah. 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 It's a town, if it's a town or roadway, the responsibility would be on the municipality to, right. to do the yeah. speed. It's an area, speed area of concern with respect to it being um, a feeder and it's being it being posted. We have to be a little creative with our speed calming so, measures. So yeah, I, I think the idea is that you want to calm speeds first, and then you want to do your your traffic study after to help reduce. <clears throat> yes. I need a translation under option three. What does STA 42 plus 00, zero mean? I don't know how to read these codes. It's I don't a, know where. That's engineering. That's it's a, a station. Sure. So when, when you lay out a roadway, when you work with plans, 
you typically have a beginning and ending point. Um, the beginning point could be station zero. Ending point would be, say, station 100. That would represent a point that was 10,000 feet away from your starting point. So 42 plus 15 would be 4,213 feet from where the it project be, started. It would be helpful if an actual address was put here so that we could use map. We could certainly do that. Um, I would like to because I don't know there are transitions that are mentioned at certain positions, mm -hmm. but this is not, I mean, it's, it's written to obscure information rather than provide it. And well, I, I think this was a tech, different this is a technical memorandum that yeah. was uh, written for uh, Mass DOT, so it's in kind but of the language of DOT. This was on the town website for everyone to read. Yeah, and, and I think um, I, I think there probably okay, needs to be we'll, some we'll, translation yeah, or we'll, some. We'll try to get that fixed. Thank you. Oh, we can get that. Um. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. okay. Nancy. Nancy. So just like Melissa was saying, if we can get those crosswalks indicated on early versions of this map, as much as we can, try to convince the state that you know this is what we're thinking about and here's what it looks like, I think that would be fabulous. I'd also be very much in favor of having those rumble strips between the bike lanes and the travel lanes well, indicated on early plans. If we well, the, the only thing about rumble strips, yeah. okay? Unfortunately, yeah. we yeah. dealt with rumble strips. Yeah. Oh. Most 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 people that live Very next noisy. to not rumble strips, yeah. they're not they're not noise. Noise. because noise. of the noise. Right. Yeah. I, okay. No rumble strips near your house. But everywhere else. But we 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 learned that. Yeah. And the other We learned all about rumble strips when we were talking about one sixteen. Behind. Yep. Thank you. Uh, I have two generic questions that might apply to all four options. Uh, you said that there would not be a curb from the street yep. to the town common. Has anyone done a study of drainage and the salt that is put on the roadways in, during the winter? Because if you look at the town where the tree belt is low and closer to the trees. Those are the areas where many of the large trees have died over the last 20, 25 years. We've replaced, at our own cost, for our neighbors and ourselves, 20, uh, 12 trees because the big trees have died, almost one after another, and I think it's the drainage from the salt. So I would request did someone do a study about that while you're doing other studies? And the other question you raised was the moving of utility poles. I would like to know where you would move them. Would you move them closer to the houses? And if so, uh, that raises potential health concerns. There have been studies about transformers being close to houses and people living in those houses develop health concerns. The studies are well known. I can't quote them now. And also, with lightning strike, striking transformers, and in the past 15 years, uh, transformers north and south of us have been struck by lightning, and the lightning uh, then the, runs into the houses, and the closer you get to the house, I think you're running at greater risk to fire. So I would be concerned, one, about no curbs, and two, about moving those utility poles too close to houses. Okay. Uh, as far as utility poles, uh, we haven't specifically identified in the, as part of the review any poles that need to be moved. We've only brought to light the fact that um, when you're building a uh, sidewalk, you want to make sure it's ADA compliant and you don't have a utility pole and you know, blocking uh, any of, the, of that path. That's all. Um, as far as the lo location. Um, so. There Scott. may not be any need to move them, but it's just something we wanted to, to make sure we include it in there as part of the design. As to your question about the drainage, that's something that will go through the permitting process. The project continues to advance through the design process. There will be some coordination with uh, Master T Environmental that they're going to assess whether there's any, uh, due to additional widening, what kind of impacts does that create from an environmental standpoint, and that will get ad addressed as part of the design process. It's just so long as salt is mentioned in their studies. <coughs> Scott, you have a question? Jay. 
<clears throat> if I could, Lou, first of all, thanks for the, your, your team's work on the peer review. Peer review came out of discussions uh, both in this office as well as uh, downstairs with our, our primary engineer. I wanted to circle back to the same paragraph that uh, Liz was talking about, and that's on my page seven, but under the um, design exceptions for option three, the second half of the paragraph I think is important, and it's the framework for my question. Um, Unlikely the mass DOT would allow design exception for bike accommodations and pedestrian accommodations given the width and space of the existing corridor. Then a subsequent sentence, a meeting would be needed with mass DOT to discuss if there was, if they would consider either of these design exceptions. What, what kind of, um, are, are we blessed with a wide open corridor versus a really narrow corridor? And that's why the standards we're having to have exception after exception after exception. If this was a town way that was 40 feet would be having the same discussion. We happen to have a town way that's over a hundred. Yeah, I mean, you have adequate right away. So I think you're, and, and, you're it's blessed. It's a category, you're, we're, we're yeah. blessed. You're blessed that you have it, right? but you're, unfortunately, you know, yeah. DOT might have a, a yeah. more difficult like, time in on in issuing an exception when there is adequate right of way. And um, the, the possibility of um, providing the, the adequate cross section yep. without Big impacts. Right, and there was a lot of there's a lot of history around how the right of way was created, the width. We we we've been down that path with I mean every tongue in cheek without that. The reality the reality here is that having that space right here is as much an impediment as it is as it is a benefit when it comes to these designs. It was easy, eight foot combined path, thirty five foot wide. Boom boom boom. Why you got the space? Yeah, no, that's 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 a good point. Thank you. Uh, Linda? Yeah. Um, just to kind of add to that, um, the reason that we have that space from the historical <coughs> standpoint is that it's a linear historical common. Mm -hmm. So it's really a common, it's really an asset to the town. It's considered a public right of way, but it's really a linear common. So it would be like going into any town and say Amherst and saying that that common that's in the middle of Amherst between where the Lord Jeff is <coughs> and uh, Pleasant Street is a right of way. Agreed. So maybe we didn't declare ours properly, but from a historical standpoint, it is a linear common. So it is a historic asset. It's not just a big public right of way. It's not 100 feet of road. Right. So I'm not quite sure how we can define that differently, sure. but it's not really a public right of way. It's a linear common. From common. my perspective, it's a linear common. Right. And it's <coughs> stated um, with the state of Massachusetts. It was wide enough at one point to have a trolley. Right. Yes, that's true. But it's, I mean, I can substantiate some of that, and I'm sure that we could work with Mass Historical to get whatever exceptions we might need. Well, I, Thank I think Mass DOT is... They should be aware of it. Are, at least it seems by what they're willing to waive or approve for design exception. They're very much aware of what the, the part means to the people. Right. Um, so. Is that unusual for them to... I uh, well, I'll tell you a little bit about my history. I worked at Mass DOT for 25 years. I reviewed these design exceptions. <laughs> <laughs> Would it have helped any if I had said that at the beginning? <laughs> so I, I kind of know what yeah. how they, they think um, in a way, or they used to think. Yeah. Um, and and they, they want to see fair and equitable accommodations for all modes, and they're willing to look at, in this case, the compromises are willing to reduce travel lanes. Um, you're at a speed and volume of this roadway where um, you're, you're right at that point where it's, it's probably on DOT's side, it's, it's really a compromise on their part because they're probably thinking that 11 feet is probably better. But um. and I, I know um, Dan's not here, but he sent an email tonight too when we get, talk about the sidewalks, and he mentioned that he was pretty sure that um, they might have been encroached by grass, but the, the sidewalks are about five feet now, just so that current dimensions. For a yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So it's been kind of grown over over the years <laughs> and not maintained, but so just to kind of put that in perspective. So, you know, if you go with five foot sidewalks, approximately where they are now, you know, yeah. it's not much of an impact other than rebuilding and accommodating the trees and things like that, which. I think we can probably safely say that the sidewalks now probably aren't the best for the trees in terms of tree health. 
And they probably, at the time they were laid down, people didn't really think about that. So the trees aren't good for this. Well, you could say that too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because of the, you know, because where they are and the, you know, the roots are thrusting up. So I, I suspect for a lot of folks that makes walking, especially at night, a bit of a challenge. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I think when you look yeah. at the side path option, it seems like the side path option is not on the table. So even when you maintain and rebuild, reconstruct the existing sidewalks, one of the things we've identified in the review is that you need to be careful in or around the trees. They're going to reconstruct the sidewalk, and the last thing you want is the tree roots pushing up the sidewalk, becoming an obstacle for someone that's in a wheelchair or walker. Or, um, so we just ask for additional um, review or, or consideration for any trees that may be within the root zone, maybe <coughs> within where the sidewalks are. Sarah? Sure. And five feet is a very bare minimum. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Um, two things. Um, first of all, I want to make sure, because I'm not sure if everybody's clear, that um, that Lou, it, we're very fortunate to have Lou um, mm -hmm. giving us this report. Mm -hmm. yes. um, he's not from our engineer team. He's not from DOT. He's doing a peer review, <laughs> which is like a great service to like help us solve this problem and so i'm really appreciative that you're here and willing to kind of take some of this passion that we have in our town <laughs> um, yeah. thank you and um and secondly um i really appreciate that you verbally got an agreement to bring the lanes down to 10 feet um i would like the road to see the road as narrow as possible because as has been mentioned people are already going too fast on it and widening it is only gonna um increase speeds so i would like to know from you while we have the benefit of your eyesight on this what you recommend for other traffic calming measures if we're, for we're forced to expand the road there's no way around it but what other traffic calming measures would you recommend that we could build into this plan? Um, I think uh, you, know, you talked about cr uh, crosswalks. It looks like looking at the plans, there's several cr crosswalks. I think one of the things I would look at or consider is um, taking the discussion a little bit further with your consultant to maybe consider... Um, Different paving materials? Uh, not paving materials. Um, pavement markings. Um, you could even consider, if you're open to it, rapid rectangular flashing beacons. Yep. Yes. which are uh, pedestrian activated uh, they're passive they don't yes. force vehicles they don't so force them to ambush. stop but they raise additional awareness we've mm -hmm. seen on um, studies that some of these um, devices increase um, driver awareness by up to 85 percent so, wow. mm -hmm. so they are That's fairly good. effective they're very so, effective okay. actually so like the ones over by mount holyo college and things like that yes and Amherst college right? yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and they have a higher level um, ones so really the kind of the order is that you do your signing and striping uh, next would be maybe a rapid rectangle flashing beacon. If the volumes of pedestrians to the volumes of vehicles and vehicle speeds starts to get um, excessive or there's a more great conflict, then you look at doing um, a study to see if uh, pedestrians, full pedestrian signal would be required or there's um, other s signal. I don't think you'll meet those requirements based on uh, what I've observed. I don't see that, there's, that you would hit that requirement, but at the very least, the rapid rectangle flashing beacons are low cost effective measures are those raised? Are those these raised? are signs that um flash side um, of the road. <coughs> road you press a button and there's two strobes that alternate back and forth so how does like a um, dual arrow with a dual wheel tractor make by that <laughs> well, they're, they're on the side of the road all right yeah. you, won't, you won't be taking these signs the, up yeah i just um, i hear people say colleges and i think of the center thing oh, you're thinking i think in the middle the yeah. Table. Yeah. 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 No. yeah no tables. no 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 tables. Right. no south south street in uh in um northampton right by the gazette you'll see okay. them right there mm. and additionally uh, high high visibility uh, visibility crosswalks um, yeah. there's some um you know, speed speed is in fact an curbs issue. Or no curbs. Uh, I'm sorry. Curbs or no curbs? Uh, well, this project has no curbs. So if you were to put in curbs, which um, they're not included in this in this design, um, then you would have the option to do curb extensions, so further narrowing the cross section. At the same time, you don't want to impede the bike lane, so you might be restricted only at intersections. Um, 
It, it, there's also little things just like by the width of your lines. Um, you know, a four inch line versus six inch line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can change the, the, the width of the pavement markings. Um, i trying to think if there's any uh, speed feedback signs. Um, yep. You, yep. You're, I think, Sherry, you're well, in the Complete Streets funding program. Mm -hmm. um, so you have probably a list of projects that. Mm -hmm. But that not, really helped on 116, mm -hmm. where those people died. Oh, yeah, yeah it, right there. To, yeah. And they're permanent, and they show the speed permanently. Sure. And they have those in um, North Hadley, too, as you're coming through the village yes. there. Yeah. They're not always on. I'm not quite sure what the schedule is there. But I have a hunch that they turn them off occasionally because they're really they're bright. Somewhere. What's that? Do we have one in the center? It's currently not in service. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because the brightness of the, 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 only, the, only, the only thing I would I would question about signage is that signage, I think in our residential village area, I, I I I I think gets too much sometimes. It it, it and it's it's just I think it's a it's distracting, but I think it it interrupts the community as a whole also. So I I like to be careful on signage. Yeah, and then, Liz, well, Liz. actually, the right of ways. Well, <laughs> Liz? Well, Dan had someone? mentioned at our prior meeting about sort of at the entrance to sort of the South Main and North Main, there being kind of a, remember an island you talked about in the middle that would be sort of a, a visual signal that you were coming into a village area? Um, yeah, like, yeah, you could put a median sort of way to... Just um, a little one. You know, yeah. uh, so you're talking about an entrance uh, an island... Like they have on um, in in North oh, Amherst Pine there, Street, mm -hmm. Pine Street, North Amherst, right? In, right? So so medians are interesting. Um, they're um, if, if used intermittently as you're approaching an intersection, maybe an opportunity to put some plantings, or if you have a pedestrian crossing, uh, mm -hmm. a protected island for pedestrians mm -hmm. who may need more time to cross the intersection. Um, if you use a steady, consistent meeting throughout a corridor, um, they may have the adverse effect on speed. No, I think I if they're, just so just if you intermittent, little, yes, um, I wouldn't recommend um, the entire length of the car. Richard? Is there any possibility that the hook could get some lights put back on North and South Main Street? In the summer, when I would walk from friends up on the east side and North Main Street down to our house, on South Main Street, I would carry a flashlight, and even then, it was sometimes difficult to see. If you're going to have bicycles and pedestrians on the same sidewalk, under the trees... There wouldn't, that's right. not... There, they, <laughs> there wouldn't be a shared use right. at that point. There would be but no the shared use. So bicycles water. would be forced to stay along the street and not use the sidewalk? Bicycles would okay. not use the sidewalk. I, I got, I got it's it. It's dangerous without having some lights along the streets. Okay. Yep. That's a good point. I actually submit, is there any study that shows that having, like, we did used to have lights and then we lost the lights to mm -hmm. save money and mm -hmm. that was important to save the environment. Um, but if having more light, especially at night, does, do people say, oh, this is a neighborhood, we should go slower? Does that, because at night you kind of can't tell you're coming into a, like if you're coming down point, so, yeah. north on 47 or south on 47, you kind of don't notice good. someone's there, especially at night. And my guess is the speed at night is faster because of that. Yeah. So I just wondered if there was any impact on having... I mean, lighting helps. So yeah. if you're... Lighting can help define the roadway edge. Um, I mean, that's a different discussion for our town, people, but... people, pedestrians that are coming at night. Well, we need to have that. Towards yeah. the intersection. So. Okay. Just one more thing. <laughs> um, as we all seem very concerned about speed. Um, when Tim and I built our house, it's the little modern house up on North Main Street. Oh, yeah. um, one of the things that <coughs> was illuminating was how much traffic, how dramatically and permanently traffic, especially heavy truck traffic, changed at the time of the hurricane. Mm -hmm. At the time of the hurricane, oh, because you couldn't drive alternate down. routes mm -hmm. were required for heavy trucks, which coincidentally, 
bypass way stations on 91. They didn't forget, did they? Mm. They did not forget. <laughs> and they, the amount of heavy truck traffic coming down has never changed since the hurricane. It's just continued to increase every year, year after year. And I wanted to ask our experts, <laughs> who do we and our experts? Say, like, wait a minute. Uh -oh. <laughs> who, who do we talk to about our town's road being used for that exclusive purpose of not being stopped, not being delayed in their heavy truck to get from point A to point B, and they do it at our expense. Mm -hmm. That's why you hear so many more trucks breaking, so, you know, the jack brake stuff, which we could have signage about, because I've seen that yep. even by town ordinance, yeah. Yep. That's town yeah, ordinance. having yep. a sign up about that. The good, and the good news is, though, if they are hitting their Jake break, that means they're slowing down coming in. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's true. That's so, true. So there's one plus. That That's also, a good point. Also, years, years before the hurricane, there was a company, NMB, yeah, I yeah, think, yeah. that did a traffic study to mm -hmm. find out that it is shorter to go to Route 2. From here. From here, yeah. through yeah. here, yeah. from getting off exit 24 yeah. or leaving their. Yeah. It's Google you can play. Google yeah. and Waze and uh, yeah. It uh, sounds like an opportunity for a way station. We, we for have, a long time. We well, have we, we have actually we have looked at waste the uh, just those instances back when Oliver talks about uh, uh, N and B. We looked at before the uh, at High Point Park, the mm -hmm. turn off that we have up. Yep. Um, and we are we had talked with our police department about looking into mm. Oh yeah, we did, but the pro the problem is is that they would have you'd have to they have to be specially trained as for truck enforcement division or it, it was a it was a complicated thing. Right. But we had there. I there can was, fundraise for it. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there was there there, there was there was there was a conversation with the uh, state police truck enforcement division about periodically setting up a. Um, a station, a roving station on 47, if they could do it safely, to, um, to get because 90 percent of the truckers, 95 percent of the truckers are probably good, are, are and, and many many obey the speed limit. It's it's the five percent, ten percent that that they're they're trying they're they're trying to, you know, miss the way station because they don't want their papers checked and that kind of stuff. So we had talked at one point, and I guess we could talk to the chief again about talking with the, the truck enforcement division and see if they would every once in a while. Can our police <clears throat> not stop a speeding truck? What's that? Can they, our oh, they can. Speeding, they speeding can. is different. Than I, I, I can guarantee you that when whenever our police are on radar patrol on 47, that after the first truck goes by them, there is never another speeding truck until that. <laughs> I don't know how that. I don't know how that happens, yeah. but I'm. I'm pretty sure you'll notice. Uh, yeah. they, they have a great communication system. Is there a law against buying a former police patrol car and placing it in my driveway permanently? Cardboard cutout. <laughs> but actually, actually, I want the real deal. There, there are there are there are towns that will take their own old cruisers and park them alongside the road as a, uh, yep. and just park them beside the road. Right. They do do that. <laughs> Design. Keith? I have a question. I have a question about plan drawings and mechanical drawings. Will drawings be provided of the entire uh, project? So the drawings are um, the the, drawings are provided by the designer for in design stages. phases or stages. Yeah. So the first plans you'll see are twenty five percent plans, as I think I believe are on the website, right. on the town website. And that's what um, you refer to with these numbers. Yes. Yeah. And those so are we'll, we'll get sets of plans to, to review on the website. Uh, they'll, they'll be yeah. Generally, they're. Um, I don't know if you post them on your website or. We do. Um, it would be available. Uh, the designer will then submit. So after twenty five, they'll submit seventy five percent and. 100% all the way up to 
PSA, which is plan specs and estimate, and the project will be advertised. So it goes from 25 and skips 50 up to 75? There is no 50, yes. Yeah. No <laughs> 25, okay. 75, 100. But 100 isn't the end. It's, it's you said, right. after 100, there's more. If, yeah, if, it's, okay. if it's okay, I, I'm going to limit yep. to a couple more questions, and we're, unless there's anybody has any new new questions. But Lauren, you had your hand up for a while. Well, I just want to say that if, we're based, if we are sort of coming to terms with option three, I would like to ask that the section be redone to accurately reflect the width of the, of the the width of the road, the width of the common, the location of the sidewalk. I mean, you're taking that cross section at, at, at a given point, mm -hmm. so we know it can vary place to place. But I believe that this drawing should show the sidewalk if they were putting it relative to the tree tree line. Yep relative to the lawn, honestly relative to the edge of the house. So yes. that people well, that would can happen. see. That would happen next anyways, yes. Right. That would come from our engineering firm. In, inside the public way. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and, that, and that, you know, and that we show an existing and a proposed. I, I don't, if we're down to one option, fine, but I'd like to, I think it's only fair that everyone be able to clearly see that in relation to what we have now. And, and, and I, if I could add, at, at some point we have to whittle the options down to hopefully we can look at one option at well, the end of Well, that's what I'm saying. Let's say we're down to option three, if that's the consensus. Let's show that in relation to the existing conditions Understood. accurately. But, but Peter, do you have something to add? I was just, I, the last meeting there was, uh, concern was expressed as to whether we were running the risk of, of not being able to get ready for the 2020 shot call. That's my question. Putting up further, and so that sort of ties in with what you're just saying, and I'm, I'm wondering if, your view is that we're going to be okay to get the engineering done in order to stay on the 2020 schedule and uh, what's going to be needed to make that happen. Here too, she can speak um, to that. Okay. Yeah, I think I think from a design perspective, I think. Um, what decisions? I, I, I think the need? critical path is consensus. Want to put the touch I think that's the critical mm -hmm. path. Mm -hmm. I think once you reach consensus, the next step would be to. Um, I don't know if the plan's gonna be revised to 25%, maybe they'll move right to a design public hearing, um, which will be in probably in this very room. Well, um, could, if I could, Maureen, you wanna, uh, Maureen is from the FERC can you, uh, can you add to that? Um, well, you're on the 2020 fiscal year for funding, and the question about can you move up early, I mean, we're just about to start fiscal year 19, so uh, in October, so we're right there. Um, there's already projects in the queue, so you're not going to go sooner. Um, yeah, that wasn't the goal. The question is, yeah. right. what does what does delay or what does the process at this point mean for keeping on schedule? Well, you right. haven't had a 25 percent design public hearing. Correct. The, the projects that I've been seeing, the biggest delays are related to right of way, mm -hmm. and you have a lot of right of way. I think you don't have right of way issues that not, you're aware of. Not on this one. Because um, the right of way will have to be ready for review by probably January, mm -hmm. or you'll probably miss that 2020 advertising. So right away has been the real critical thing. Mm -hmm. um, and you should make sure that your designer is on top of what kind of right of way is required. Municipal and state, because if they don't have plans in to mass dot right of way for review by around January of 19, your project's going to be in jeopardy. And those are the 75 plans after the public hearings? Yeah. Correct. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any new ground? Yes. I just, um, I, I feel like um, in a way we can we keep addressing the, the sidewalk distance from the road mm -hmm. on the west, west side. <laughs> Keep getting the west, west side. side, right? Now. The side opposite from you, right? Exactly. Correct. Um, the tree side. The west side. The tree yeah, with the button ball. The tree side. The river side. Uh, river side. Um, oh. And I feel like, you know, in this room and, 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 you know, from everybody who's speaking and even in the kind of footnotes of the plans, it was keep them, keep the sidewalks where they are. And then every time I look at this picture, I'm like, they're going to move them too much. I know. So no, I, I just... You know, that actually is to Lauren's point about yeah, an accurate yeah. representation right. of the cross section. Yeah, so I, think, I know yeah. this is a picture, yeah. but yeah. I remember when I first looked, I'm like, oh my god, that's a 
I mean, it's, it clearly it's not. I'm like, well, they don't have the numbers, so maybe it's okay. But I think in the plans know. you'll typically see, uh, and they were in some of the older ones, you'll see a cross section. Because remember, this while it is a little confusing, that that was not the purpose of this right. diagram. Mm -hmm. And right. and like you're saying, it was just to bring all of the design elements in clump I together, understand. so you can kind yes. of see. There it. was no approximate. Over, over yeah, there. Really yeah. No measurement. Or, or. Because I just think that you know, I just the, again the the linear common, the historic character, the being able to walk the loop far away from the road, which you know I live at one forty North Main, so people walk it constantly. I should, I, my kids always wanted to have a lemonade stand because there's so much traffic, walking traffic, right? So I, I just, I, it's a huge advantage of that of both North and South. Main that we have that loop that I mean, people walk. It would be ridiculous to get to the 25% hearing and not have drawings that are clear and accurate enough that we have these same questions. Because that would really be just, a waste Just to be system. clear, the, the drawings that are on the plans are not representative of right. what we show here. This right. was just to make no, a comparison. I, know, I understand that. I get, um, I get that. But it's, but it's very difficult. And, and likewise, we've heard, and we'll make sure that they're accurate. Okay. Thank That's you. under the homework category, Nancy. <laughs> Just quickly, can you lay out what comes next? So next, there will be a 25% uh, yeah. hearing, and that would and we'll find out about that, and that will be the, sometime the uh, yeah. We we do that that that's the next thing that we we have that's to go great. to the 25% hearing. The 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 one thing <clears throat> is that on there's for for a large project to to go forward, and I, I don't care what where what what. If you ever built a house or a garage, yeah. there's always compromises that have to be made. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I would just caution, and, and that when we look at the sidewalks, okay, that we at some point we have we at as a group have to make a determination: Are we willing to sacrifice some of our old growth trees to keep the sidewalks in the present location? I'm not saying that, but at some point. We we all can we all can agree that we want to keep the sidewalks where they are, but if we have if we have professionals come in or people that are in the business and they're telling us that that's you know ar arborous, and, and we have one that lives in Sunland, that my next door neighbor, that that it wouldn't be to the to health of the it would be a detriment to the health of the trees that we have to consider maybe altering the plans a little bit, and I, I just ask <clears throat> I just ask. That everyone keeps an open mind, and I'm not saying. I mean, w our goal can be to keep the sidewalks where they are, and and I've had conversations with some that said, well, they do it in Central Park, they do it in New York City, they do it in other locations, and that may be all well and good. Our only problem is that we have old growth trees that have established root that have, a, have established root yeah. patterns. So I re I think we, that's one thing that we really have to look at because I I don't I think our town. And a lot of individuals, and, and there's a lot of individuals that have have sacrificed a lot of themselves and their personal resources, as in money, to make our our, our beltway what it is right now. Can so, we frame that question as to what? How can we approach these sidewalks to try to keep them relatively where they are and maintain the old growth trees? Versus the another way to ask that question is. Where's the best place to put the sidewalk? Well, the best place to put the sidewalk, you know, would be somewhere where no one, you know, if you could totally separate it, obviously that would be probably best for the trees, but has other problems. So I think we have to be asking the right question. Right. And, and I think, too, the question I would ask is, is there a possibility of some design exceptions where the sidewalk possibly narrows a little bit in certain places to not have to deal with um, losing the trees, we could, you know, maybe they'd be four feet in certain places so that you weren't disturbing the roots as much as opposed to a five foot. So it might not, I mean, I think that's what's happened now. This, the sidewalk is very inconsistent in width. Good point. Yes, just want to just make one comment uh, as far as the design public hearing. And this is something you probably want to discuss both with the district and your designer. Uh, the plans as presented, if you're to move forward with option three, um, they would be, need to be altered in some way, shape, or form for the design right. public hearing. Right. I would recommend approaching DOT and seeing if that can happen in a way it doesn't require resubmission of 25%. Because okay. okay. that would create additional delays. Huh. Yep. So it's, um, it's a rendering, not a, not a, not a s 
significant change. Yeah, I mean the the section now. I think you have you have uh, eleven and twos. Yeah. Yep, yep. So yep. that's twenty six yep. feet, right. and you're going to go to thirty. So there's an additional two feet on each side. But there's no drainage. There's no so the. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the, the what I'm trying to make is just to avoid to having the, your designer redo twenty full set of twenty five percent plans and resubmit, and they may just be able to change some of the general plans to get you through the design public hearing process, and then you move you continue to move forward so you can meet the. Let's well, save a little good money. advice. Thank you, Mr. Williams. One more question on um, the sidewalk north of North Silver Lane. I'm obviously going to ask about this because it runs through my front yard. That doesn't exist right now. If we is there, do we need to decide if that's going to happen or if it's not going to happen, which would affect your front yard also? Um, I know we talked about possibility of doing just one side, mm -hmm. whether it's just going up on the west side or who kind of makes that decision and when do you ask the question about that? Uh, we have to have the one of the exceptions that we have to talk about, so that, that has to be questioned on very soon. Okay. The 25% should get us in the ballpark. The 25% con is conceptual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that's a conceptual point. Then after, then after, then when they go from 25 to 75, that's where you're actually putting numbers to, to different things. So, so it has to be done soon. You have them on both sides in that drawing, Lou, or is it crossover to just the west? I'm sorry. For are there sidewalks on the east side, north of the intersection of North Silver? Yes. Yeah, all the way to Thank you. Uh, Claybrook. Got it. And, and I Thank think you. one point would be that if you are considering. Um, only doing one sidewalk on one side, you pick a logical point. So maybe the crossing point is mm -hmm. at North Silver Lane, There's the crossing right. um, yeah. where you allow them to cross back to so the one remaining sidewalk that extends all the way to Claybrook. Got it. That makes sense. Okay. And that will require a design exception for Correct. that under the Healthy Transportation Policy Directive. So one on both sides. Yep. So you don't Any have other questions? Answers. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to. Um, so. I had a, a big wake up moment um, a couple weeks ago because I have an old house and lots of old growth trees. And um, my across the street neighbor showed me a picture of my house when it went up for sale in 1952. And none of the trees were there. And I look at those trees and I think they've been here for 100 years. They've been here 150 years. They're not. They're like 50 years old, right? They're, you know, the, the I want to keep it, I, you know, we got to keep the sycamore no matter what, right? But the maple tree, I've lost two maple trees in front of my house and the new ones yeah. are planted are great already. And you know, I'm a newcomer. I've been here 25 years. The trees are already looking lovely. Yeah. So you know, moving trees. We don't want to lose all the trees, but we also can lose some trees to get us the right space on the road because yeah. the trees we plant new ones and they, they all die anyway. Right. <laughs> and we've, we've lost. Along, like with the town, with, we have a, we're talking 300 years here. We're not talking you know next 10 years. We're talking a long time. They have the right path that, that you know to keep the historic character. We've lost yeah. a number over the. I mean, it, Right. Trees, on foot. it's a continual right. replacement process. I feel bad for them, but just like yeah. the select board. Just like, yeah, thank you. Thank you. And like thank all you of guys. us, you know, we're all getting yeah, trimmed the deadwood every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> all right, is there any other questions? Thank you. Then before everybody leaves, I just want to let people know what's happening this weekend in case you haven't nice. heard. <laughs> so, Friday, Friday, uh, we have... Uh, the Sunland Elementary School is going to have a performance, and they're going to be hot dogs, chips, beverages. There's going to be a baseball, uh, French fries by Spuds and Love, watermelon salad, raffle tickets, or Red Sox tickets, and the Frontier Regional School School Scotland Travelers are going to be there. There's also there's going to be a birthday cake contest for the Happy oh, Sunland nice. 300. And I believe you can you breathe those uh, breathe your birthday cakes down down uh, and uh, they collect the birthday cakes and they will be judged. They have some professional judges, some bakers. But there's going to be three. You have to look on site. They can spend. But there's three first place uh, gifts were hundred dollars each for the winning entries. And there's uh, and three. Cake, right? Yeah, right. Three, and there's cake. <laughs> three second place fifty dollar <laughs> awards. Yeah. And uh, after the performance at the elementary school, they will be cutting birthday cake, and everybody will be invited to, to join in with a birthday cake. On Saturday, there will also be uh, 
uh, contra dancing will also, if you're contra dancing or just want to walk, at starting at seven o'clock down at the elementary school also. On Saturday, start, Saturday morning at 8.30, the farmer market slash craft fair will start. That'll be down in this area. Uh, there's a breakfast bar by the Women's Club and uh, nice. Rouse Coffee, which will have hot coffee in the morning and iced coffee in the afternoon. 9 a.m., there's live music down here by the Squash Blossom Band. 10 a.m., there's kids' activities, three leg races, wheelbarrow race, sack races, potato spoon races, sheep herding demonstrations. 1015 is um, live music by uh, Sugarloaf String Band. 1130, the Mountain View Dance School will have a demonstration. 12 o'clock, Western Mass Martial Arts School demonstration. The parade will kick off at 1 p.m. It starts at the elementary school, come out onto Old Amherst Road, take a right-hand turn. It'll then travel up scenic, historic, 26-foot wide, 26 foot wide <laughs> South Main Street. Uh, then it will uh, go through the center of town. The bridge will be closed. If you haven't, people come into town. The, they, they're, suggesting, they're suggesting that uh, you have your friends and neighbors that are coming to visit uh, and family, uh, that you probably try to have them come in before 10, 10 30, 11 o'clock. They should be at your home because the bridge will be closed at 1. It'll stay closed for two hours. We have a two-hour closing. Um, then, is there going to be a ferry across the river? Yeah. <laughs> there, there, it, for, the, for, the, for the entrepreneurs in us that we may be offering helicopter rides back and forth. In the, uh, in, in the afternoon, after, after, after the parade, there's kids' activities, bounce houses, carnival games, magic show, balloon sculpting, face painting. Uh, there's going to be horse and wagon rides, hot air balloon rides. Wow. And those that are fortunate enough to have Polish in their history, their genealogy, they're going to have a genealogy research by a Polish Genealogy Society of Massachusetts. They'll be there so that they can research your genealogy. We're going to have food vendors, um, all things all things maple, Bernat's Polish Deli, Bub's Barbecue, Flavors of Cook Farm, Bridgewright Grill, some Rossi Farm Sand, Spuds and Love, UMass, Truck Baby Burke. So we have fine cuisine dining. Uh, go to Japan. There's going to be fried dough. So there's all, all that. Uh, there's going to be a beer and wine garden, uh, and we're going to have three local breweries. We're going to have Berkshire, uh, Hitchcock, and ABC, Amherst Brewing Company. They'll all be on site. And then at 3.15, we start with uh, a, a jazz by the Parker Jazz Project, uh, followed by 4.30 is Des Roy, 4.45, The Banished Misfortune, 7 o'clock is a John Whalenlovich, 8.15 is TJ and the Peepers, um, so these all bands have been scouted by the, uh, the committee. And then 9.30, there's going to be fireworks display that are going to be shot off and back here going towards Main Street. Uh, hopefully we'll, we'll uh, avoid the shirt. The, uh, <laughs> um, and then, most importantly, and, and something that hasn't gotten a lot Sorry, of the air, like air player advertising, on Sunday, there's going to be a bunch of activities on Sunday. And they're all, uh, and it's going to be, um, spearheaded by the fire department from 10 to 5 they're going to this is going to be open down here fire trucks and equipment will be on display kids games fire uh, kids firefighter challenge bean bo bean bag toss hose target practice fire so you may be able to squirt a hose at one another uh 10 30 to 3 o'clock there's going to be demonstrations fire trucks uh hose stream barrel contest bunker gear and air pack demonstration from 12 to 2 there's going to be a free barbecue and that's going to be uh, burgers and hot dogs, iced tea, lemonade. And from 1 to 5, uh, the South Deerfield Polish Club is sponsoring a uh, Polish band, Dennis Mollusk, and the uh, Maestro Band. So Where's the free meal going to be? The free beer, did you say? Yeah. Oh, the free meal. Right here. Right down here. Because uh, when, when, when you come in Saturday, if you come in Saturday to any of the festivals, you'll see there's going to be tents set up. The, but when the tent the tents are going to set up and what the the committee did is try to make a week because they had to rent the tent and most tents are rented for the weekend so they tried to do that's why they got so many things happening so in the, in the fire department stepped up and going to run the sunday activities so and if anybody out there in tv land uh wants to volunteer or anything you're you're just contacted the committee they have one final meeting on thursday they'll be here thursday if you want, just come down and see them. They'll be more than more than happy to take your names. No reason to leave town. 
and you can rest up for Monday. <laughs> okay, any questions? So what we're, what we're going to do right now uh, at our next meeting, we'll talk about the, 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 the four options. I assume, I, I think that option three was the, the choice of those present today uh, with certain restrictions. So we'll, we'll uh, talk about that next Monday. We have a meeting on the 18th. Our summer schedule's got kind of pushed back a little bit. But anything else? I, I, I just I want to thank you all for coming. I mean, I mean, it may seem like a repetition and sometimes, but usually what we found, we've been working on it for two plus years now. Um, and we're we're great that we're we're very thankful that we have the input thank from you everyone. Thank for this printout; it was really helpful. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. And, and really thank Lou for all, all the work and your good explanation of, of what this is all about. Yeah. 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 Thank you. So you can either go out in a rail of tar and feather, or yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I want to come back for all these great events you're having. Yeah. 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 Can we work that we out hope, somehow? We hope, we hope we do. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. I love your house, by the way. It's a great house. Oh, thanks. I, it's a neat house. Yeah, that's why I, I was trying to do it. Is this like a short end? Once you said the, said the fence. Short end is out of I know it's a short end. So this is where we took the section that you're looking at. So you have the... So we good job. Good job. All right, everyone. Uh, Thank you. Thanks. Good. Thank continue with the meeting. Dave, Dave Pierce has uh, said that we're going to have a short meeting tonight. It's all relative. It's all everything relative. <laughs> all right. So we have the uh, approval minutes of uh, okay, the board 2018. Uh, motion. Second. Yeah, motion made and second to uh, approve the minutes of June 4th, 2018, as presented. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. I almost said Margaret. Sherry, three zero. Six Sorry. more years, you'll be saying Sherry. I know. See, I'm looking uh, for, okay. Do we, any updates, Scott? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the only update I would bring, Mr. Chair, is that we were at the Frontier Regional Cap hey, Regional, Regional High School Committee. Oh, perfect, thank you. You just want to slide that conversation back to the back desk while we go about our meeting? <laughs> Not that we don't mind. Oh, no, it's oh, oh you're yeah. on the TV, young fella. <laughs> We don't, we didn't know the copy from the That's okay. Keith, thank you. Hey, Keith, it was nice seeing you again. Nice seeing you guys. So, um, at Frontier, at the Capital Planning Committee, we think we're starting to narrow down on the infamous project list, uh, as well as the way to fund some of the capital versus the maintenance annualized versus the major maintenance. 
I uh, regretted to hear that the Deerfield selectmen decided to step down from that working group, feeling that there wasn't a lot of activity. I would remind people who aren't in those meetings that this came about as a funding request for over $3 million of backlog of, a, of work. Uh, the current thinking is to bond for a couple of years, and a couple of years would be less than a million dollars, and then have a robust major maintenance, capital stabilization, and maintenance plan. And for anybody to quit that working group at this time, uh, I think shows a lack of um, vision. OK, anything well else, Patty? That's all. Thank you. David? Uh, the only thing I had was the preliminary call with the, the designers and everything for this meeting, so. Good. Yeah, my, my only. Uh, uh oh. <coughs> You're meeting downstairs. My, my only uh, thing that I'd like to add is that um, I, I meant what I said. I, I, I think <clears throat> sometimes in, in the public in the public forum, sometimes people forget that it, it's it's difficult for us as a board or any elected person to make to make a decision that does not have public input. Mm -hmm. And 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 we I mean, there's times that you maybe that you hear something that you don't necessarily want to hear, but it's important that you hear it so that you can you can you can have the entire scope so you can make up you can make the right this the right decision. Correct. Yeah. And and sometimes it takes unfortunately, uh, sometimes good things take a while to happen. Um, and and I mean we're in for we're in for the long game. I mean it's a two and a half million dollar project two and a half million dollars project and we get one shot to get it right. So hopefully right. we're gonna get it right. Um, Sherry, you want to add anything? Um, just one thing. I've had a couple inquiries about the lights on the Sunderland Bridge. So oh. they're not there. <laughs> the ones that don't work? Right. Yeah. So I contacted SDRT. District 2 to see what was going on. And every two years they do um, uh, an inspection of the bridge. And during that time they found a lot of corrosion on the lights and they felt that, that it was a public safety risk. So the lights were removed. Um, there's no plan right now to replace them, but they're in the process of putting a plan together. So, huh. okay, that's good to know. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? Um, oh, uh, another thing. At the last, <clears throat> at the last ZBA meeting last week on the 120 North Main Street, there was a couple issues that that were raised by, uh, by some of the abutters. The first issue was about the uh, the care of the property, and in particular, where there was a, a concern about the mowing of the property. Well, um, we we uh, contacted we the board of selectmen. We talked to Sherry, who talked to uh, everyone, and what basically what happened was that there was a misunderstanding uh, with the with the contractor. The contractor had had been asked to stop mowing the pasture. So that um, the, the pasture could be hey. hayed, right. mm. um, and that he misconstrued that to mean stop mowing at the whole property. So the mowing has been has Resume. been restored, yep. uh, and matter of fact, it was mowed. It was mowed Resume. today, um, so it is mowed. The uh, the other question was about the uh, the police and watching the property. That the and I can I can report that the police um, do have um, standing orders to, to watch um, 120 on a regular basis. So the, ch the chief has just clarified that that, that, that is occurring. So uh, we're going we're gonna to keep moving forward with that. So no more updates. You all set, David? I'm good. Yeah. Scotty? All set. Sherry? All right. Um, I do need you to vote to sign the notes for the sewer relining project. Oh, right. Yeah. So, Sunderland Riverside Park donation policy, we need to talk about that tonight? Um, it's just there for your review. Okay. So we can vote on it next week? Yeah. All right. Request for one day liquor license. Scott, do you have that? I have two uh, requests. These are coinciding with the 300 celebration. Proposed dates are both for 16th and 17th. Um, in the case of Berkshire Brewing Company, as well as Hitchcock Brewing Company, uh, confirmation from the, the application is filled out correctly, confirmation from the chiefs, 
have been no opposition. And these are both for profit. So the fees, malt beverage only served, location is defined. 100 bucks. 100 bucks each. Yep. Uh, move to uh, accept the application for the liquor license. Second. One day. Sorry, two days. Two days. Two days. Uh, second is noted. A motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. The MOU for sludge hauling is there for you to um, sign. Insurance agreement. Uh, that is part of the um, USDA <coughs> grant application mm -hmm. for the community facilities uh, program that we talked about last week. Yep. Signed by the chair. So I have a bond here and tax up notice. Uh, move to enter into the agreement for sludge hauling as presented. With a Greenfield no. co-op? No, that's not sludge hauling. That's actually. Oh, the sludge hauling. Okay. Yeah, sludge hauling. Okay. Motion made. Second. Motion enter into sludge hauling contract. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We have a 3 0 on that. And. I have a, a bond for the uh, relining of the waste treatment, uh, some, sorry, sewer relining. This is a Greenfield Cooperative Bank. It's a band for $58,438. Uh, this again goes to Greenfield Cooperative Bank, uh, and it is 1.98% uh, maturity. Okay. Motion That's made in second to enter into a, uh, sign the, a band. Sign the, sign the band. So moved. Second. 1.98%. I like those books. It's a good Before. number. It's a good number. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right, we got that. As, as a, a back note, Mr. Chair, this is, of course, paid for by the sewer users through the, through the uh, sewer budget process. We started with $672,000, of which there's 347 remaining. Okay. All right, anything else? Scott, you have something to read? I have a quote. Quote. Uh, this is a more contemporary quote, and I would suggest that it reads uh, very simply. Quote, I hesitate to contemplate the future of our institutions, of our government, and of our country if the preoccupation of its officials is to be no longer the promotion of justice and equal opportunity, but is to be devoted to barter in the markets. Unquote. Herbert Hoover. Herbert Hoover said that? Herbert, Herbert Hoover. Hoover. No way. That guy. That guy. Who'd have thunk it? Way to go, Herbert. I have one more thing. Hmm. Sure. The Sunderland Complete Streets project construction is going to start on Monday or Tuesday next hey, week. Nice. So we'll be send, sending out a robocall about that as soon as I get. I'm not sure if they're going to. I think they're going to start on Garage Road. Okay. But I'm just waiting to hear from the contractor with the list of where nice. and when. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. More progress. More progress. We're getting there. A lot going on, Sherry. Yeah. It is. Okay. I entertain a motion. Uh, motion to adjourn. Second. Motion made. Seconded to adjourn. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? 3-0. Please, de please declare us out at 830.